research. That's why you are here. So to begin with, before we uh, turn on to what is thesis writing and how to write an effective uh, thesis, let us understand what research is basically. So research, as the word itself suggests, as I'm an English teacher, I always advocate my students to play with the words. There is always a word formation process through which the words are formed. So research itself has re and search. The words are there. So this. Uh, it has gone through a fixation process and that talks about searching something again. But this researching is not just simply searching out something again, but searching out something with an intention, innovating things, discovering facts, at the same time contributing something in the stream of the existing knowledge. Now, please underline and highlight this word contribution. Unless and until there is a contribution in the research, it will not be considered as a valid work. So whenever you go for any kind of research work, always remember there should happen some kind of contribution from your side. Otherwise, what would happen if you end up doing the same thing again, which already somebody else has done, it will be just the repetition of the task or summarizing the data. It is not like that. Research is something that always begins with some intention there is a research question or there is a tentative hypothesis with the consideration of that we start a research and then we march towards a certain direction with certain objectives in mind so your research should have aims and objectives you should okay, in which you will lead towards your conclusions so in this journey, you come out or you come across various facts, various observations, various discoveries or various innovations, and you have to conclude or culminate, summarize all your observations, all your understanding, all your discoveries and innovations in the research paper or in the thesis. That is what is called as research. And then ultimately, you have to lead to a conclusion which will be a kind of contribution, something new, which will give a new approach or a kind of conclusion um, in the existing stream of knowledge. Now, let us first uh, highlight on academic perspective, understand what is thesis basically. So a dissertation or a thesis is a lengthy piece of academic writing, which is based on original research that is submitted as a part of your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, right? The structure of the thesis varies depending on your field of specialization. Basically, it is divided into four to five chapters, including an introduction and concluding chapters. Now, why have I written this line? That it depends on your field of specialization because there are certain different norms how a thesis has to be, for example, in humanities, in the form of uh, the thesis is always in the form of a long essay, developing an overall sense of argument revolving around the central thesis. The chapters are organized around diverse case studies or themes. But if you go for empirical research in the subjects like sciences or social sciences, the thesis is going to feature all the components that we are about to discuss uh in the further slides in certain cases there are uh, they are dealt in a separate chapter for example discussions happen separately and arguments happen in a separate chapter leading towards conclusion while in other uh, type of uh, thesis writing according to the field we are required to combine them as per the requirement so for example in specific types of qualitative social sciences the discussions as well as results are woven together than being dealt separately. But in natural sciences, the discussion part is separate in another chapter and result section comes in other, other chapter. So analysis happens in one chapter and findings or results, your conclusions will come in other chapter. So it depends on the type of study that you have chosen. But what we will be discussing today we will be discussing today the common factors of research writing or thesis writing 
which will be same for all kind of disciplines. So this is a basic structure. This is how the research work flows. You begin with an introduction. You are on literature review, and um, uh, you have certain methodology, results, discussion, and conclusion. We will discuss all these things in detail. Okay. So this is the main slide that we have to focus on. So whenever you decide to conduct a research, you have to undergo certain steps. So step number one, choose your research topic very carefully. Many people with all kind of enthusiasm start working on their research work, but uh, some of them fail because they do not understand the limitation of their study. Okay, now what is limitation? Whenever we choose any topic, there is a scope and there is a limitation to our study. We cannot end up on covering all the possible aspects of one certain topic. It's not possible. That's why we have to focus on a limited area, which will give you enough data. So you can write next 300 pages of your thesis and add on it to some contribution, some kind of quality conclusion. So you have to carefully move in that. So main, main thing what happens, for example, let's say if you decide survey of population growth in India, if you decide some topic like this, your whole life will not be enough to identify and uh, find out how the population grown in India because this population growth itself has several factors, influential factors, like various policies, various cultural notions, various uh, regional notions, thereafter various concepts, okay, scientific reasons, biological reasons, many more factors are there. Okay, this is one side. Another side is when you say population growth in India. So since when? Since India came on map, or even if you say after independence or pre-independence, uh, okay, that from that time till date, there will be several hundreds of years, right? Will you be able to identify all of these in just one book itself? It's not possible. Understand your research, especially in the form of thesis writing, is time bound. There are certain years dedicatedly given to you as a research scholar by the university to finish your research within that time frame. So you have to choose certain topic which should be achievable within that time frame. For example, you should be able to finish your work within the next five years or three years minimum, right? So just minimum after three years, you can submit your thesis at the max is five years practically. But in certain cases, if you couldn't finish it out, you can take one or two years extensions. There are uh, different rules for uh, ladies candidates who are married, who undergo uh, different kind of things like uh, pregnancy or delivery of a child or something. Automatically, one year uh, extension is granted by the government or let's say university. So tentatively from three to five years or let's say six years, you can should finish your work. So you should always choose certain topic which should be limited and in your capacity. Now, what is your capacity? One is it should be in the capacity of time. For example, researching all this data throughout so many years is not possible. Not possible in the sense that what is your capacity? Are you able to go on field and search how population grown in India? So which places will you visit? Is it possible for you to cover entire nation? It's not possible, right? So in certain cases, you won't be able to go on the field work. So what will you do is, you can say that the population growth in India in next or in last five years or after COVID-19 or before COVID or from 2019, something like that. Okay, so if you decide like that, then from COVID-19, let's say from 2021, let's say 21, 22, 23, three years, or you can add on five years, total five years from, you know, before today, five years. So from, let's say 2018 to 23, you can conduct a survey of this path. Now, this is one side that you have covered. Another side, you have to decide, even if you have decided five years, 
it won't be possible again for you to cover the entire nation. So you have to identify certain regions where you will be studying this, focusing on it. For example, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, or uh, Telangana, or let's say Kela, or uh, uh, some, uh, Seven Sisters area, or in uh, uh, Punjab, or something like that. That's also a wide area to cover. It's not that easy. And especially if you go for field, uh, field work, these are very bigger states in India. OK, so you can decide that you will you have to choose your method of study or your techniques or samples of your study. So what will you do is, OK, it's not possible for me personally to go on field work. So what I'll do is I'll better go and uh, access the government reports, population reports of the population control uh, government uh, sections or departments, which more often go on uh, counting the populations, election committees, and so on, the reports by election committees, report by some other government officials. So if you study those uh, reports, it will be a little easy for you because basic surveys have already done by somebody. OK, and very important thing is somebody who has done it, these are authentic sources. So this is not some fake and random information that is collected, right? So you can rely on that information and you can take that information as your base of a study. So you can study those samples and then you can start uh, studying it out. OK, so these are some limitations your study must have because you have certain limitations. First limitation is the time span. Second limitation is that your accessibility. Right. Third limitation is you should have ample data about the particular topic. OK. For example, if you decide use of cryptocurrency uh, in a certain village in Maharashtra, you won't be find much data on it because people are not much aware about what cryptocurrency is. OK. One or two members are only 10, 15 people if they are using. They, that will not be sufficient for your study, right? So you have to take some larger sample, but sample not larger enough, not too much large for exceeding your time frame. Okay. Very important another factor is it should be important to the wider academic community. Now, what does it mean by your research should not be focused or benefit only one certain community? It should benefit to multiple people, especially the whole academics. All those who are there in academics or upcoming scholars, they should get benefited by your work. That's why you have to choose certain topic which should have a greater contribution. Okay. Now, it is an opportunity to showcase your thoughts and ideas. So you have to make sure how will you present your thoughts and ideas all together it should be achievable within the time frame as i told you why is it important you have to contemplate on this question that why your research is really important is it going to contribute something new so your research should be something that previous scholar may not have tried may not have explored so you should work on certain topic which will not uh, may not have explored by the previous researchers or even if they have explored there might be a lot of gaps which are not covered which you will be covering in your research so you can have those contributions and that's why your research is important so you should first be aware about why your research is important and who will be getting benefited by this these two things you have to keep in mind once this is done, once you identify the larger area of your research work, for example, um, study of uh, uh, health issues uh, in the lactating mothers in certain tribal regions in Maharashtra. So I'll be going in that region and studying uh, the tribal women who are lactating mothers, and I'll try to find out what are the health issues they face. Okay. Second step you have to do is examine what is expected. There are some ethicals and protocols, modules and handbooks, references, styles and guides that is provided by your university. Every university has different demands. 
for example when we talk about style sheets there are mla apa chicago styles of writing research so according to your field of study for example in uh, social sciences arts or humanities uh, usually mla or apa style sheet is used but if you are a student of psychology or sciences they more prefer on apa american psychological terms. so that uh, apa style sheet you have to study and use that for the reference in your thesis now understand before you start writing your research before even you start conducting your research or data collection you should always better read the handbook given by your university because the university talks about the steps in which you have to conduct your research and submit your research step by step at the same time they also talk about ethics and protocols certain things will not be acceptable in some universities which will be fair practices in some other universities right so you should better understand what your university demands exactly what your university expects from you which style sheets your university recommends okay now in another case if you don't get any of such handbooks what you can do best is refer some previous thesis uh, in your department submitted by previous scholars and just check out which style sheets they have uh, used and try to follow that um before you start writing it out um, you should have a structure of your thesis in your mind how many chapters will be there what kind of methodology will you use how will you conduct your research which will be your samples of study for example my sample of study is tribal women in some interior parts of uh, uh, southern uh, or western ghats okay that is uh, in western ghats there are some tribal communities i'll visit those and then uh, i'll conduct a research uh, uh, by studying their samples okay then uh, you should be aware about the samples you should be aware about your methodology for example i'll be going on field work i will personally go and visit there and study it out if it's not possible for me to go for a field work then what i'll do is i'll read the government reports and study and then conduct my research uh, there is a possibility that uh, you might uh, 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 even when you go for the field work how will you collect the information on how the health conditions of these women are i may frame a questionnaire i may take their interviews one on one or i'll uh, print out those questions and ask them to fill it out if they are educated if they are not then i have to ask those questions and fill it on their behalf so in this way i'll be doing it out in certain cases you can simply make google forms and spread it out yeah that is the best uh, technique to use because google form gives you ready-made analysis if your study is quantitative now understand the difference between quantitative and qualitative so quantitative deals with the quantity that is numbers qualitative deals with the words or a data in a paragraph or text form or in even bigger than uh, paragraphs of course so analyzing quantitative data through uh, google form becomes easy because it gives you directly pie charts graphs bar graphs so it becomes easy for you to uh, get the analysis for example 70 percent of the women are suffering from issues related to some uh, malnutrition or uh, 30 percent of women are suffering from uh, uh, issues uh, deficiency of vitamin d something like that so you'll get direct numbers of those through google form now um, everything all the kind of these things like various types of source materials the structure of your thesis should be there in your mind before you go and start conducting your research start collecting data uh, even the forms of analysis as uh, i told you you have to check it out if they are valid and accepted in your university for example certain university may not um, accept that you have used google form for uh, collecting data of health issues of uh, tribal women because they are not able to fill the google forms so who will fill it out for you 
so you have filled it out let's say but that won't be considered as authentic because you might be manipulating the data right so you have to understand all these things and then incorporate those third step is have a clear goal and structure always have a proposal outline a very with a careful approach so that outline will give you an idea about how will you march towards your goal you should have a fixed goal that i want to collect the data on this particular topic then what are the steps you will be taking how what are your aims why are you doing it out okay i am doing it out because i want to help those women to improve their health conditions because if the mother is healthy the coming progenies will be healthy because due to the malnutrition of the mother, mothers the babies are also suffering and there is a high death threshold in the tribal regions or they are very um, uh, they get victimized for uh, uh, or various kind of uh, diseases very easily because they do have very low immune system so my study is going to identify these problems so i can help them out with certain solutions and those solutions will improvise their health conditions and ultimately the children's health conditions right so these are certain things i do have in my mind so the, with these objectives with this aim in my you know uh, uh, my study i will march towards my goal and then i'll plan my certain methodology some techniques of research methods of research and i'll conduct my research in that way once i collect my data i'll do analysis and then i'll go for discussions results and then findings okay ultimate conclusions now this is one aspect that i have talked about before i go to those tribal areas to study about health conditions of women like taking the dust i should have ample reading beforehand ample research that i should check out if there are some studies happened before this if some previous people have worked on it if yes then i should study what they have done exactly at the same time if they have left some questions there in their research so i can address those questions in my study at the same time may not be somebody in india have uh, conducted a research on um, health issues of uh, travel women in west class but somebody in africa has done the similar study so i can refer that work as a model for my study at the same time i can also investigate on what are various options available uh, for data collection what are various options available for uh, for example government projects or uh, let's say some health issues uh, if there are some health issues what are other uh, uh, benefits given by government to certain kind of women if they give certain money amount or uh, if you can bring certain kind of uh, project uh, there or you can even tie up with some ngos you have to identify and read on all kind of these things okay um you have to structure then your work and restructuring is a step of it understand once you draft your research work that is in the form of thesis is never final in one go you have to keep on making changes as the time passes for example you can get it reviewed from your uh, 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 your phd guide so your guide can give you some insights and you can make some changes you can even get it peer reviewed at the same time you can even cross verify the authenticity of the data yeah, that you are putting understand only authentic work will be rewarded and granted if your work has some scrutiny uh some fake data in it it will be rejected it will not be completed so understand whenever you will go for data collection only rely on authentic resources like government websites uh, or some well established well renowned uh, ngos or organizations do not go for some random surveys or random conclusions on some random websites so drafting redrafting proofreading structuring these are certain steps validly included in it always remember this first step in mind that write as you go from day one itself start writing once you decide this is a topic i want to work on first thing that you have to do is 
randomly write out whatever comes in your mind related to that topic before you start reading out for literature review or even researching so at least you will understand what is your tentative idea what is your uh, basic knowledge about that particular topic and that might be helpful in when you will write your introduction for your study at the same time it also gives you a direction so first write it out in the essay form randomly without even uh, worrying about how uh, should be the method what is aim and objective it's okay throughout the period of your coursework you will soon understand what are various techniques what are various uh, research methods through which you can conduct your research okay so uh, before that you first start writing it out at the same time uh, for example when you are collecting data uh, so your data collections happens through various sources one is field work you will be going there for interview second is literature review so you'll read scholarly articles books interviews uh, lectures of uh, some renowned people you may meet some people you can read some previous thesis of some previous scholars and then you summarize everything in the form of a literature review so whenever you start reading it out immediately at that moment start writing a literature review so the day you get admission create five create a folder in your google drive make five chapters make make five uh, different google docs on it and give title chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 and chapter 5 keep it ready handy so whenever you get some data randomly start putting it in the related chapters for example chapter 1 will be introductory chapter right chapter 2 will be theoretical framework chapter 3 will be 3 and 4 will be your analysis or discussion and chapter 5 will be your results and findings and conclusion of your study right so accordingly you can start putting those data at the same time when you write a synopsis half of the work is already done for chapter 1 so you can use certain points from your synopsis or your proposal in your chapter 1 such as aims and objectives hypothesis problem statement scope and limitation right methodology theoretical frameworks certain theoretical framework in it so in chapter 2 you can add on uh, literature review just check out uh, the guidelines of your university if they ask you to write it in chapter 1 or chapter 2 and the moment i come across some new article i am reading it out immediately i am writing a literature review for that so in this way you can start writing write as you go do not think that i am going to collect the data first then i'll read everything then i'll start writing it doesn't happen in that it goes hand in hand because there are hundreds of things that you are going to refer to and then half of them you are going to forget in the span of the time that is a natural tendency of human memory so better you start writing it out as you go check that you have addressed everything um, maintain a diary where you make all kind of rough notes where for example uh, whatever new things you have come across if you have come across a concept write details about where you have come across that concept from and then once you finalize your uh, five chapters let's say of your uh, research check out if you have missed something you can tick mark all the points those you have addressed and then you can add on which are left now it may happen that some of the points may not be even important once you start writing out but it's okay it happens it's it's a very normal process you are going to collect hundreds of things and might be using only 20 or 30 of them and 70 of them may not be useful that is what is known as data collection filtering is what is the next step in which you filter out 20 or 30 things which will be directly going in your research writing so that is very normal process don't think that you have done aimless uh, or some directionless collection it's not like that so that is why you should always have a aim first and you should have a suitable target so you may not waste your energy in collecting something which is not even contributing into your work so always decide aims and objectives and research question first so you can start directing your energy towards a correct research okay um always make sure to keep on frequent backups for example if you are working in google doc keep on downloading it after certain intervals once you 
have ample writing so in case something uh, goes wrong you share uh, those copies with your friends on your friends email if you have another email id share one copy on it with the date so you can understand which one is the latest otherwise what would happen there will be hundreds of the files with the same name and you don't understand which one is the latest right so better start putting practice of putting a date so you'll understand which one is the latest so this frequent backups and research notes are very important two things you have to do is one you have to maintain a notebook second thing you have to start writing in the drive because writing in drive is also very important ultimately it will give you uh, it's always better to type your own thesis than relying on third person you can do that if you want but uh, it's always better to uh, go for your own uh, research writing because this is you who knows which one thing is correct because there may happen some contextual errors later on right that uh, the one who is typing your research referring your notes may write something wrong and you may not identify because that's a small thing but uh, you know the context so you may easily remove it out always keep track of your work consistency is very important so always continue next step that i have said is continue to question always continue to question on your work whatever you have written is it current is it logical is it contributing into something is it making some sense why this statement is like this what is the proof for it whatever statements you use or you make always back those up with concrete data concrete examples maintain a questioning and critical mindset because it will always keeps you challenged motivated creative and um, uh, it will help you also to contribute something very logical and uh, quality uh, with some quality always check out how strongly are you convinced about a statement that you have made if you are not convinced with the statement that you have made you cannot convince others also so always have sufficient kind of explanations which will satisfy you first only then you will be able to satisfy others explain your reasoning forming and strong arguments bibliography contains uh, in bibliography use plenty of references make sure that you address uh, each and every thing in your uh, research because if you don't refer give proper citations or references it will get caught into plagiarism and then your plagiarism report goes high okay so avoid that if you want to avoid that make sure to give every possible citation okay now next step here is well structured coherent and polished thesis reassessing the logic of the whole piece so read it in one go and see if it is logically connected if one chapter is leading to two two is leading to three and three to four and four to five there should be some connection in it give sufficient time to proofreading and checking because there happens a lot of grammatical mistakes there happen a lot of contextual or spelling related mistakes you may write some different con uh, concept all together so always give a dedicated months for proofreading everything get proofread from your friend from some expert proofread and from the language expert and you for person who will take it it out so in this way you can get it through trade by three to four people that's always better and then ultimately you proofread it out and whatever is logical uh, suggestion employ that in your uh, search log main argument should be supported by the relevant citation so make sure you give all kind of references contributions of the most influential theories and research add on into the authenticity of the data in your research this is how is the structure of the uh, thesis these are certain points commonly included like title page acknowledgement table of contents abstract uh, list of figures tables glossary then your chapters under chapters various points and all um this is sample of your title page check out which tire kind of sample your university recommends if there is nothing then you can use something like this which begins with your name department that is submitted by submitted to date month and uh, year under date comes month and year 
and um, a dissertation or thesis submitted in the partial fulfillment of the degree, doctor degree. Okay, so you have to write this out in this way. Uh, page of acknowledgement is optional, but this is something uh, which is really amazing because this is a place where you can thank people or to all those people who have contributed greatly or supported you, motivated you, guided you from time to time, like your family members or your uh, friends or your research guide also. So you can thank all of them in the page of acknowledgement. You can acknowledge their efforts. Abstract is very important aspect of the research uh, uh, thesis because abstract gives the abstract is like a mirror. It gives a kind of glimpse what you have done in next 300 pages. So abstract generally flows from 150 to 300 words uh, for research papers basically. But for thesis writing, it may go for uh, around one complete page or one and a half pages. So around uh, five to uh, six paragraphs. Uh, it depends on the size of your uh, research work. For example, in uh, uh, what happened in one of my uh, teachers had completed his uh, doctorate from some uh, foreign university. And uh, they had a strict norm that your uh, thesis has to be only 150 pages. So he had to sub finish it up. His uh, dissertation was only 60 pages. And that was a strict norm. And my MPhil dissertation, which I did in India, it was 100 pages, MPhil dissertation. My uh, PhD thesis was 300 pages. So it depends from university to university, check out the norms. And accordingly, you can fix the size of your summary. It's 130. Under some, uh, this abstract, what are the things you have to include? Under abstract, you have to talk about main topic and aim of your research in one or two points, main main points, describe the method that you are going to use, summarize main results, findings of your work, and state your conclusions straightforward in your abstract. Talk about scope and limitations also. OK. Under the table of contents, list out all the essential details, like chapters, their page numbers, headings, subheadings, their page numbers, and everything. So it will be easy to navigate throughout your thesis later on to anyone who is referring your document. If you are using uh, various figures and tables in your uh, work, then give a list of it. So whenever the person is, let's say, on page number 17, referring to some figure, and uh, don't know what it is exactly, or don't remember it, because the person has to glance through the whole thesis again. So better the person will go on the page where you have written list of figures and tables, and just check out what is the meaning of it. Same with the abbreviations or glossary. For example, especially in scientific field, you do have various concepts which are not familiar to other people. So they can go on the page of glossary and understand what's the meaning of it, meaning of it and continue reading it. Um, introductory chapter, uh, chapter one begins with it. And uh, this is something is very important, which should include what is your main theme of the topic? What is your purpose of research? And how your research is relevant? OK, so uh, introduction should establish your research topic. Uh, then uh, uh, necessary background in, uh, information to contextualize your work, narrow down the focus, and uh, define the scope of your research. So scope and limitations, basically. Uh, then it should discuss the state of existing research on the topic uh, from literature review, let's say. And um, in argumentative form, uh, like what are the research gaps left? Then you clearly state your objectives of the research, your research question, and indicate how will you answer them, means through which methodology are you trying to answer or address your questions. Give overall view of your thesis, like chapterization will come in. So the reader should be able to understand what are you researching, why are you conducting your research, and how will you conduct research. So these three answers should be there in your introductory chapter. Then comes literature review under the theoretical framework of my chapter one, which is highly important, because unless and until you refer others' work, your 
research work may not be valid because you should give some theoretical grounding for your your study should be based on some theory okay so you have to talk about what theory you have considered here what kind of studies you are referred here on the basis of which you are conducting this research so under literature you you have to talk about this um please make sure that you understand properly how to write a literature review because it conclude it uh, has your theme methodologies uh, statement of problem aims and objectives and major findings and research gaps so all these things and how that paper research paper or thesis is related to your work you have to write out about everything in literature review so please make sure that you understand literature review properly identify certain uh, good uh, uh, records of i mean uh, read it from books or uh, especially if you are referring mla style sheet handbook or even apa uh, they give you uh, one overall idea about how to write literature review or you can even uh, identify some good uh, uh, lectures also on your book or even on some uh, research websites now methodology is something which is important because this is the way we start conducting our research i talked about it for example qualitative quantitative there might be experimental or ethnographic ethnographic means studying particular ethnical group or ethnicity or something um, so these are certain uh, various types of research through which we can conduct our study your methods of collecting data you have to mention everything in your thesis for example interviews surveys archives or government reports uh, then details of where when with whom the research took place your method of analyzing data how you analyze your data i mean have you done discourse analysis textual analysis or have you done statistical analysis now statistical analysis goes for quantitative study dealing with numbers so there are some formulas in which you have to do the statistical analysis you have to take separate training for that or else approach to those who are really good in doing statistical analysis so they will help you, you out to give you proper analysis for your study so you can lead to a correct conclusion there are various tools and materials you we use for our research such as computer programs lab equipments or and so on our discussions of any obstacle you face in conducting the research and how you overcome them and evaluation or justification of your methods why this method was correct or relevant to your study so you have to talk about this so in the section of methodology your goal is to accurately report what you did while also convincing the uh, reader that this was the best approach to answering your research questions or objectives now this is a major section results of findings in certain uh, uh, this is they do uh, deal with separate deal with finding section separately uh, especially in the last chapter so you can structure the section with sub questions uh, hypothesis topics which is already addressed in first chapter itself and then in the results findings you can give a careful approach to what are the major Uh, observations you have come across and what are your conclusion on those ob observations now there is a section on discussion or uh, in certain cases it may be called as analysis where you talk about uh, you start analyzing data that you have collected um, you also have to talk about scope and limitation of your study for example my study the scope of my study is to identify and uh, uh, understand health issues of the lactic infant mothers in tribal regions of western ghats but my study is limited only to the western ghats of maharashtra not to the western ghats of karnataka or you know uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, boundary sharing other uh, states let's say or even not tribal communities which are staying in gadchiroli or some other place i am going to study tribal areas which are only located in the western maharashtra so western ghats so this is my limitation of the study i will be studying only lactic infant mothers not the issues their babies are facing or teenagers or adults are facing okay or some other women are facing i will be focusing only on lactic infant mothers this will be the limitation of my study so in this way you have to talk about scope and limitation of your study so the reader understands what is the major focus of your study 
so in here you also have to discuss where you explore the meaning implications of your results in relation to your research questions here you should interpret uh, the results in detail discussing whether they meet your expectations there might be variation before you go there you might have thought that there might be a uh, hundred percent of women who are facing the same issue but after going there you might have uh, checked out that there are some ngos which are already working on these problems there are some government uh, agencies which have given certain kind of uh, benefits to these women and the situation is now improvised those who are well educated about uh, this kind of policies of the government who are taking benefit of uh, certain kind of schemes right so this might be a different kind of uh, uh, observation you may have or understanding you may have so whatever it is you have to put it straight forward in your uh, conclusion of the study uh, if uh, any results were unexpected you may come across something sudden like uh, a lot of uh, children are facing a uh, uh, hole in the heart why because of the kind of weather conditions they are staying in or let's say uh, the mining is happening nearby which is also affecting the pregnant ladies and it is ultimately resulting in the growth of that uh, embryo right so that ultimately also affects the health of the child and most of the children uh, taking birth are uh, are uh, delivered with this kind of defect so you have come across a very different kind of uh, result or observation on this field itself so you have to talk about everything here now understand this is very uh, objective subjectivity has no scope here in this section whatever you opine whatever kind of arguments you have you have to write those in the section of findings not here in this section of discussion you have to analyze everything from the third person perspective applying all the methods or only here is those you have considered for your study here you don't have to add on any kind of subjectivity no personal opinions will be floated here in this particular section okay now conclusion section is highly important which actually gives emphasis on what is your main argument so it should have concise answers to the main research question leave the reader with clear understanding of your central argument it is a final reflection on what you did and how you did it there are some recommendations or practices for the further research you can even talk about the research gaps there might be certain areas which you could not be able to cover due to the limitation or of resources or time limitations or might be people are not at all aware about it right uh, so there might be certain things which you have come across as challenges you can talk about those challenges so the further researchers can work on this now uh, how your findings contribute into the knowledge of the field you have to give a stress on it and why your research matters what have you added to what was already known i mean how you can give emphasis to the conclusion uh never ever forget to give proper referencing for this please identify the style sheet which is recommended in your field like APA, MLA, uh, Oscola, or let's say uh, uh, Chicago. Study that carefully and then uh, uh, refer it throughout your work of uh, your research. Uh, in certain cases, there will come appendices, for example, interviews, transcripts, photographs, survey letters, okay, all the uh, full figures, tables, separate tables, explanations. These are certain things which you can add on as the part of your thesis uh, in appendices, which won't be the major part of your work, but it will come as a supplementary thing. Uh, these are certain mistakes to be avoided. Do not omit preliminary pages. These are very important. Otherwise, uh, your work will be incomplete. Abstract your thesis. If it is longer than one page, it will not be uh, concluded into proper kind of argument it has a brief size just study that and limit it otherwise if it goes on than uh, more than one page it will ruin the overall uh, content and you will end up adding on to unnecessary information in it um there should not be multiple formatting problems make sure that you should 
have standard formatting like spacings of uh, indentation how should be the alignment of your uh, research work which font you are going to follow the font size generally for example times new roman 12 font 1.5 line spacing uh, thereafter uh, left margin 1.5 uh, uh, inches then top uh, bottom and right should one inch so according to that and justified uh, formatting so according to that you have to study and format your uh, thesis and there should be you know uniformity in overall next three to uh, two to three hundred pages whatever uh, range of your thesis has uh, always remember proposals does have different tense and your thesis has different tense for example in proposal you propose an idea or you propose for, to conduct a research on certain topics so it is written in future tense but when you write your thesis your research is already completed and you are writing what about your findings what are your findings what are your observations so you have to write either in the present perfect tense and past tense always remember it should not there should not be any future tense in it. um your research should observe academic integrity completely there should not be any violation violation plagiarism or any copying of the material or uh, relying on uh, sources which are not authentic it will ultimately affect your overall work your thesis uh, may must not contain any grammatical errors uh, jargons or unclear paragraphs organization or uh, any writing related blunders because it will ultimately uh, ruin overall impact of your work so get it grammar checked from now we have really good uh, websites like uh, softwares like grammarly or you can um, get it checked from some really uh, uh, good person from uh, uh, that field from expert in your field uh, and language expert these are certain recommendations from my side these are some references i have uh, used for my work okay now uh, the session is open for uh, uh, discussion